Last pair are uh, Simon Gosling inside of Gronsky Loud and tailed off. Kiss of five out, Melbourne. Five out for the Guineas. Straight. About to leave the back straight, in fact. Third quarter in 31.1, and the favourites at the moment have it between them. Lockley Lad leaves the back. Only a head in front now of Forever Grand, who races up to join it. Third to a clear third is China. Then Casino Rainbow, Thomas Tank Engine, wide out, Gronsky Lad. But around the corner, Forever Grant. Poke the head in front of Lockley Eagle Hawk, who's not done with. Then China and further back into the clear, Casino Rainbow. Class is going to tell here, though, and Frosty, oh, away he goes, this leader. Forever Grant taken to the front. Forever Grant will win it. Too tough for Lockley Eagle Hawk. Third is China over Gronsky Lad. Set for the 1,000 guineas, here's John. Sandy Darling, the inside runner. Regal Sachet rears. In the centre of the line settles again and attended in with Regal Sachet. Stand well again. Ready. Off to a good start in the 1,000 guineas and the first to jump fast near the insider. Dropping out the back early, Lady of the Pines is last on settling down and just in advance of her is Snardana and getting back along the inside was Sue. Settling into stride now and Sandy Darling showed the way by a half length to Fuss. A length further back moving up on the outside, Cornwall Queen followed by only a lady on the rails is fourth in behind them, Rose of Danehill, reigning Bella. Gimmick a bit further back being followed by Melody Kensington Palace over on the inside of Regal Sachet and they were followed by Snardame who's about fourth last on the outside of Igwasu followed by Lady of the Pines uh, and Graceful Ember has got back to last. They're on the railway side, 1,000 metres left to go, Sandy Darling, uh, about a length to Rafas, a length further back, Cornwall Queen over on the inside, being followed after a couple there by only a lady who's racing on the inside of Rose of Danehill, a length and a half to Raining Bell, followed by Gimmick, who's close handy, Malinti next around the outside of Kensington Palace, being followed by Regal Sachet and Snardame as well back, uh, and they were followed by Igwasu, who's third last, followed by Lady of the Pines, and last of all, Graceful Emma. They're racing up past the 600 metre mark, Sandy Darling, still about a half length and advance of fuss and over on the inside Cornwall Queen is in a beautiful position a length and a half Rose of Danehill starting to run on followed by only a lady back in behind them gimmick being followed by reigning bell further away on the field Melindy pulled to the outside Kensington Palace as well back as they make the home turn Cornwall Queen's got a lovely run on the inside to take the lead with fuss challenging Rose of Danehill coming down the outside followed by reigning bell Kensington Palace is a long way back as they get to the 200 meter mark and now Rose of Danehill takes the lead lady of the pines finishing on strongly deeper on the track is Regal Sachet with a great Great burst of speed, Lady of the Pines on the outside, put her head in front of Rose of Danehill, close to home, Lady of the Pines, Lady of the Pines wins the guineas from Rose of Danehill, Regal Sachet third, close up fourth, Kensington Palace, reigning bell behind them, and they were followed by Melody and further away a Snar Dame, followed by only a lady from Fuss and Iguasu, Graceful Emma, well back towards the tail of the field, Gimmick is second last and Sandy Darling's run last. Number six, the winner, Lady of the Pines, $18.20, a rank outside of home here. In the guineas, $18.20 and $4.90 for Lady of the Pines. Dropped out the back, as you saw at the start of the race. This month has been a very good effort by a filly that hasn't been in great form since a good win earlier in the autumn. And when Rose of Danehill looked to have the race all parceled up, Lady of the Pines has come with a big burst. Now here's the turn into the straight. Cornwall Queen taking the lead. It's only a lady back along the inside. And wider on the track in the all fluorescent yellow colours there is Fuss and Rose of Danehill, which was going like a winner at this point. Now Kensington Palace couldn't get much of a cracker than there, could he? Or she? She's badly blocked in, running about sixth or seventh in the Kingston Town colours, as you see. And Lady of the Pines, coming with a big burst of speed, has quickly put pay to the opposition. Rose of Danehill. And forget all about the run of Kensington Palace, as you see there. She's in all sorts of bother. And she'll lose no friends, I feel sure, for the... Uh, forthcoming races such as the uh, Wakeful Stakes and the Crown Oaks over the Melbourne Cup Carnival. There she is coming through there to finish not far back in fourth place. But the winner of the race, a good performance, nothing away from her. His Lady of the Pines, written by Darren Beedman, gives Darren a winning double here this afternoon. $18.20 and $4.90. Defeating number one, Rose of Danehill, written by Stephen King, 160, and number 13, third, Regal Sachet, written by Glenn Boss at $4 for the place. So an outsider home here in the Guineas. And the unlucky runner there, obviously, was Kensington Palace. The time recorded just about to come up. The last 600, they've recorded 35.71 for the last 600. We'll have an overall time shortly. And uh, there is Darren Beedman. Very happy there as he brings Lady of the Pines back to scale at the end of the 1,000 guineas, the main race of the day here at Caulfield on day three of the big carnival. Just uh, reminding you, of course, tomorrow we have racing at Moe, the Moe Cup Day. Should be a beauty. Nick Robin there to bring you all the action, and I'll be back here to Caulfield. Race six is next. The Churnside Stakes at 3.40. Righto, John, back for you for that uh, Wait for Age Classic there today, race six. Field of seven, no place dividend for third. 
We'll be back on scale. Thousand Guineas winner, Lady of the Pines. As he comes back to scale, another masterful ride in a Group 1. And I wonder whether he'll do the Frankie de Tori star jump. I don't reckon he's as good as Frankie at doing the star jump. <laughs> ah, well, the picture tells a story. And, uh, yes, I can't lie, that was recorded just a short time ago. Sam, that I special at Mooney Valley is race five, number four, Harley Vance. Hey. 18, 20 and 490, number six. One Rose of Dane Hill, 160. 13, Regal Sachet, four even. Quinella, 48, 20. Exacta, 137, 10. And the trifecta, 1,455, 70 on six, one and 13. Group one winning trainer. In fact, a couple of group ones over the carnival, isn't it? Peter Hayes for you, Pengulu on the weekend. And today, what a great win for your Bonnie Bluebird filly. Wonderful, yes. Uh, Caulfield actually has been a difficult place for us to win Group 1 races in, in the past, so it's been a, a welcome change of luck here to win a couple of Group 1s. A lovely ride in the race, and she always looked as though as they came for home that she was looming up to win. Yes. Uh, coming to the turn, I wasn't sure, but Darren said she was travelling very well. Um, and then when she straightened and he got clear, I could see she was really coming home hard. And then I looked back and saw Rosa Danehill getting to the line very strongly. And uh, But we were just a bit too strong on the line. Now, a few big races, Group 1s have eluded the Hayes clan over the years. We saw the Turak win on the weekend. Uh, I suppose this signals a, a real strike race, I suppose, of the big Group 1s coming up for you in the weeks to come now. We hope so. I mean, I came into the season sort of a bit pessimistic about my Group 1 horses this year. I thought, well, we might struggle a bit, but uh, it's, a, it's a funny game. I mean, you know, just, just when you think you might be struggling in the bigger races, up pops a Lady of the Pines. Or a Pangulu, exactly. Do we look towards the Wakefield and the Oaks now for Lady of the Pines? Definitely the Wakefield, and uh, we'll work the Oaks out beyond that. Peter, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Peter Hayes there, the winning trainer of today's Group 1000 Guineas and the runners are in the enclosure. The jockeys are up here and they'll be heading out shortly for the Group 2 Churnside featuring eight-time Group 1 winner Mahogany. Two right, Brendan. Great field today for the Churnside. At the 22, Dancing Chip 780, Moon Boy 750, Double Jack 21, Carla Silver 280, General Norm 25, Bow Trick 470 and Maple Way 470. Set now at Murray Bridge. No, there's a couple out. Here's Ron. Good on you. Thanks for that, Hilton. The runners are just heading out onto the track as we speak. And a crackerjack field. Accomplice has won two Group 1s. Spartacus 3, Mahogany's won 8. We're joined by John Hawke's son, Wayne, who has just put out the instructions for Larry Cassidy and hopefully winning instructions for you. Well, it's certainly a tough race and it's a really quality field. Probably a shame it's just not a Group 1, but uh, I, think, I think it certainly deserves to be a Group 1, but it's going to be a great race. There's been a bit of talk around a about a possible track record with the quality of sprinters here. Well, it's certainly not impossible. I mean, you're, you're talking sort of great horses, Spartacus, he's probably, probably would be uh, rated the best sprinter in Australia in the old mahogany and uh, Compton's certainly no hack, that's for sure. Well he's won two group ones, the latter being the Doombin 10,000, he's resuming today, how's he been working? Yeah he's been really good, he trialled well at Epsom uh, last Tuesday morning and uh, he's been here about 10 days and uh, hasn't left a note and uh, looks great. He sweated up just a touch in the yard, but you tell me he does that usually. No, I mean, before the Galaxy, he was a muck leather. At uh, 10,000 days, Stradbroke day, he's always like that. But with it being a bit overcast today, it certainly helped him, and uh, he only just broke out a little bit. And... There's been a lot of betting fluctuations on track for this race. We'll take you through the betting market, Wayne, before asking you a few more questions. Mahogany, 380, Spartacus at 250. Accomplice, $6.60. Great value there. I know Wayne's about to wander off and have a bet. That's a good omen for your punters who are following along with our good tips from the track today. Staging, $11. And be discreet at $7.30, looking to continue her winning run. Spartacus is the selection. I know the Yalambi Stud Syndicate, who've purchased a half share, are very confident. Mahogany looking to win yet another stakes race. Away from your fellow, what would you say is the hardest to beat? I really think Mahogany's the one to beat. He's, uh, he's always great horse fresh, and just Spartacus is... Uh, I mean, he was up sort of racing against Guineas first up in Sydney, and his, his preparation hasn't been 100% because of bad weather and, uh, and that sort of thing. So I think really Mahogany's the one to beat, I think. Well, your dad's probably watching from the Warwick Farm base. What report can you give him on how accomplice is? Well, I don't want to report too much, but hopefully I'm waving to him after the race. <laughs> Wayne, all the best, and we'll catch up afterwards. Thanks, Brendan. OK, Wayne Hawkes there, who's the deputy for John Hawkes here in Melbourne, looks after the stable, and Johnny will be down on the weekend, hopefully, to keep an eye on those famous all cerise colours, and hopefully they'll be hoping on, or continuing, I should say, on their winning way as we count down to the Group 2 Churnside Stakes. Good on you, Brendan. Yes, we know he's got plenty to have a bet because he certainly won't shout Wayne Hawkes there at Caulfield. 
They're moving up at Canberra for race number five. And uh, just about set to go here. Let's take you to David Steele. In for uh, race five here at uh, Canberra Exhibition Park. The favourite on Super Tab is Carla Silver at $2 even. Moon Boy, the other in the market. It's a nice line, back straight. Here's race five. The light's up now. Racing and Tubble Jack and the centres come away quickly. Not a lot of speed out of the gate, Moon Boy, neither Carla Silver. And at the moment, Dancing Chip on the inside trying to hold Tubble Jack out. Moon Boy gets to third early, then worthy winner. Carla Silver trying to get one off there midfield. I think he succeeded, although he's still out three wide as Maple Way edges out in the running line. Second last is Bow Trick early, and General Norm is last of all. Well, Carla Silver, favourite, not having a great deal of luck in the early part, as eventually Tubble Jack works his way to the front now. They're uh, racing down the straight to get two rounds to go. Dancing Chip's going to take the trail behind the leader. Now, Moon Boy is one out, and going on with it here is Carla Silver. He'll find the spot outside the lead shortly. Worthy winner is fifth as they uh, run to the back straight. Back on the inside of Moon Boy is going to get the tag behind Carla Silver. Third last general norm over Maple Way. And Bow Trick is last of all. Well, on settling, a lap and three quarters out now. And uh, Joe Hewitt took Tubble Jack to the lead. He shows the way over Dancing Chip who at the moment's on the inside of Carla Silva, is going to be forced to race uh, outside the lead, probably for the rest of the race. It gives Moon Boy a good card into the race over Worthy Winner. Then General Norm inside of Maple Way. Bow Trick is last of all. They don't appear to be going quickly as they leave the back straight now on the side. A thousand to run. 32.7 first quarter of the last mile. Tubble Jack doing it at his leisure. Leads by four or five metres to Carla Silva. They haven't gone hard, but he's been posted for the entire trip. Dancing chip behind the lead. And Moon Boy, the six-year-old, first up in Australia, racing 1-1 as they uh, get to the 850. Further back, worthy winner wedged away. Next pair, Maple Way and General Norm. And Bow Trick can see the whole field as they come to the bell. 800 to run now. Second quarter in 32.1. Speed hasn't been all that quick, and Tubble Jack takes him to the back. A leader by two metres now to Carla Silva. Dancing Chip still looking for a run. Moon Boy's being perfectly placed. Back on the inside is Worthy Winner as they speed up, really, for the first time in the race. Next is Maple Way over General Norman. Still Bow Trick is last of all. Down the back straight they run now. Tubble Jack, his lead's been cut now to only a head as Carla Silva slides up on the outside. Looks to be going better than the leader. Moon Boy following Carla Silva every step of the journey. Then Dancing Chip as they start to apply the pressure. Back next is Maple Way over Worthy Winner and Bow Trick. They leave the back in 32.1. It's just a sprint home. We're on the inside now. Carla Silva takes over, but Moon Boy. Moon Boy's putting in the big ones. He challenges Carla Silva quickly. They've dropped off the others. Maple Way runs to third and then Bow Trick, but in the straight and Moon Boy, the XNZ, drove to the front over Carla Silva and here's an early double for Osmond and Frost. Moon Boy racing away. Bow Trick flying, but impressive as Moon Boy. Scores by four and a half metres over Bow Trick. Carla Silva third and then Maple Way over Dancing Chip, Tubble Jack capitulated, worthy winner and General Norm is last to finish. Moon Boy and the very familiar Glenn Frost colours there, 410 and 480 has scored first up from New Zealand. Nice going pace, a real daisy cutter, look at that action there. At Caulfield, Rod Gallegas is looking for a Darren Beedman treble, he's gone Spartacus number four. Favourite at 270, Mahogany 370, some good horses, big odds here. Can Grande, Red Hope, two of them, $11 and $22. Accomplice at $5.80. Now we've got a protest at Murray Bridge as we had a look there. The uh, winner did seem to shift. It's around here, he's won eight Group 1s. Richard Friedman, can he make it another big stakes victory? Well, he's, uh, he's a great old horse. He never runs a bad race first up and he's had five starts at 1,000 metres and won four of them. So he'll be right there. Uh, doing his best. They're just about to jump, I guess, too, and I'd like to go and watch it, but if you've backed him, he'll run a great race for you. All the very best. Thanks, mate. As far as betting information goes on track, there's been a lot of fluctuations. Putt is finding it hard to sort out the standout for the Group 2 churn side. We're getting close, so Hilton will take you back to you, and we'll watch this great sprint race. Watch this great sprint race. Just about set, Brendan. Here's John. Jing moving in to complete the line. A great field of sprinters, seven only. A real speed test. All in, set, racing, 
Good start. Be discreet. One of the first to bound out with Ken Grande and Spartacus began speedily. And just in behind them, Red Hope followed by Accomplice second last. And Mahogany has got back to last. Settling into stride. 800 metres left to run. Spartacus takes the leader. About a length on Be discreet. A length and a half to Ken Grande there. Followed by staging on the outside of Red Hope. Back along the inside. Accomplice is second last. And Mahogany's last of all. About seven lengths off the lead as they go by the 600 metre marker. Spartacus the leader. Three quarters of a length on Be discreet. A length and a half. Ken Grande staging on the outside. Accomplice making ground on the rails as next followed by Red Hope and pulled around that pair as Mahogany starting to run on. As they're making the home turn, they straighten up. The leaders went very wide. Spartacus tackled by Beta Streeter. Accomplice down on the inside is running on well and they're followed by staging and back behind them Can Grande. Mahogany starting to wind up down the outside. Red Hope is last of all 150 metres left to go. Spartacus is being tackled by Mahogany is flashing down the outside. It's Mahogany. Mahogany hit the front 100 to go and has careered away. A big winner, Mahogany. Mahogany wins by a length and a half to Spartacus and Beta Streeter just ahead of staging followed by Ken Grande, accomplice, and last of all is Red Hope. What a magnificent animal he is. Mahogany, beautifully ridden again by Greg Hall, just bided his time, and as you saw, a great tactical ride there. He allowed the horse, which hasn't raced for, for quite some months now, his last run was back in May, and goes particularly well fresh. And there he is, stretching away to win in dazzling fashion. At 57.52. 57.52 must be close to a record here. Great winter mahogany. And it is mahogany. Mahogany the winner, ridden by Gregory Hall. Raced by Mr. and Mrs. Lloyd Williams, Mr. and Mrs. Kerry Packer. A seven year old brown gelding by last tycoon out of El Shandiga. Trained by Lee Friedman, a winning treble for Lee here this afternoon. Here they are making the turn. And the two leaders, as you saw, went to the centre of the track. Spartacus in the orange colours, be discreet. Mahogany still last at that point, now going past Red Hope. And here's a head-on shot as they come into the straight here. Accomplice in the all cerise colours is there. With every chance, had he been good enough. But now look at Mahogany starting to wind up. And the champion that he is, he has drawn away for a great victory in the Churnside Stakes. Running the journey in 57.52. Oh, that's outside the record. 56.1 is the time, the record. And they've run 57.52. And here comes Mahogany. Look at him come down the outside, grabbing these leaders, Spartacus, and be discreet in all numbers, one, four, and eight. One, four, eight. Official placings in the Churnside Stakes. Number one, Mahogany, ridden by Gregory Hall. Defeats number four, Spartacus, ridden by Darren Beedman. And only inches away in third place is be discreet, ridden by Michael Carson. 57.52, and no doubt Mahogany will get a great ovation from the crowd. There's staging fourth. Pan Grande's run fifth, Accomplice has run sixth, and Red Hope has finished in last place. 372.20 Mahogany. 372.20 beats number four Spartacus at $1.70 in the Churnside Stakes back to Hilton. The second last race, the Racing Legends Country Cup at 4.20. That's nine Group 1s to Mahogany, and uh, what a great association Greg Hall has had with him. He just really runs. In fact, I beg your pardon, that's a Group 2 there, but he's had, uh, of course, eight Group 1s already, and the way he's gone today, there could be more in store. Absolutely brilliant sprint. Made top class gallopers look second rate. That's all you can say about that. At Sandown, the winner was Patsy Montana, 380 and 140. Tazzy McBen, second. Hoppy's fire, third. Trifecta, 95, 60. Dolly it's that Hilton backtrack side here, Richard. Wasn't that sensational? Uh, you've got to love him. He's an absolute freak, old hog. You know, he does that time and time again. Thousand metres, they're the best sprinters in the country. Well, they're all sort of second, third and fourth best because he's the best sprinter in the country. He's just an old freak. He's just a sensation. Watch Greg come back. He's got in love with the horse, isn't he? Well, you've got to be because the horse has tried his heart out from all distances, from 1,000 metres he's, where he's won group ones to 2,500 metres. And he's just... He's, he's in a class of his own. I, I can never remember a horse who's done what he's done. What's next then? Um, I don't know. We just keep the old bloke happy and keep him going. He'll probably be back here next year winning the same race again. Well, Kerry, no doubt, is watching along. And, and what a great horse he's been for Kerry Packer. He's been a great horse for all of us. Everyone who's ever had anything to do with him, he's just been um, a delight. He's a tricky horse mentally to get right, I understand. Well, he just likes to be fresh. He likes to not be overworked. He, he just likes to be, you know, a bit fat and roly-poly, and he produces his best on a light preparation, and, and that's the way we keep him. Richard, all the very best, and congratulate, long and hard. Thanks, Brendan, we will. OK. <laughs> Celebrations in store for the Friedman Brothers this evening. Mahogany wins yet another stakes race. As we place, four Spartacus, 170, eight B discreet, no third, Quinella, 480, exact at 12.10, the trifecta, 43.50.
It's Sandown. Peter Caulfield catching up with Group 1 winning jockey from today, Darren Beedman. And Darren, we saw your great traits as a rider today with uh, Lady of the Pines in the Group 1. Yes, it was a tremendous job by uh, Peter Hayes, the way that he's been able to train this filly as an individual. And uh, sound like Jacko, don't I? A bit of an individual. <laughs> but um, um, no, he, had, he put blinkers on her and three and a half tweak runs. Uh, and I just switched her off, just let her relax, enjoy the race for the first thousand metres and uh, hopefully I was close enough on the corner to be able to pick them up, and she did. Well, Frankie Dettori has mastered the star jump. Um, today you said you added a few extras to the routine. Yeah, mate, it, you know, it's just getting a bit boring, so I put a hop, skip and a jump at the finish of it. <laughs> it wasn't a stumble at all. <laughs> at least it didn't land on the grass. <laughs> no, no, then it would have been... Uh, I would have been open, would have been open slather then. <laughs> it's been much publicised you retiring at the end of the year. It must be great for you to add another Group One to your many, many Group Ones you've ridden. Yes, well I think that's 49 for the year. Uh, for the for my career. For the year. For the year, I'd be nice, but 49 for the year, 49 for the career. career uh, so. Uh, you know, it's, these Group 1 races are, you know, beautiful to win. Well, Denendry went amiss. You missed out on a great ride there in the Caulfield Cup. Uh, hopefully you'll pass the half-century mark in the near future. Yes, yeah. I've, there's, there's still plenty uh, left before the end of the season, so hopefully uh, I can hit, hit the half-century. Darren, nice to catch up with you and congratulations. Thanks, Brennan. Darren Beeman there, a Group 1 winner today with Lady of the Pines, and what a great star jump it was today with that hop, skip and a jump added on the end, Hilton. Be careful, Brendan. Might uh, do an ankle. The uh, seemed to double over there, but the soft grass cushioned the landing. Late scratching at Mini Valley. The horse that's down on the track. It's like a laser up now. Like a laser is a late scratching at Mooney Valley. Number seven out of race six. All at the start in Sydney. We're inside two minutes to that race. And there's beat the bullet on screen number six. Now, the update goes late night fun. It's a start. They're off and running now. And Rebuilder was one of the best away. Blue Sun beaten for early speed. Coming across wing foot and also born again. Zam just easing back now as I speak. And around the outside, the bolter. Eastern Harvest goes after the lead. Eastern Harvest works down towards the uh, 250 by about a length. Second placing wing foot on the outside of Rebuilder. Fair Bay is fourth, tracking the fancied run of the top weight. weight. Dolve eat the inside. And further back then to I'm a Tate. And over on the outside, Artistic Rose a little deeper. Back behind those born again, Zam Blue son and last of all is the ruffy of the field Salamine at the post a circuit to go in the Murray Bridge Cup and the leader is the bolter Eastern Harvest on top shows the way by about a length to wing foot the top weight and favourite second third placing over on the inside Rue Builder fourth placing Dolve eight two and a half fair bay settling nicely outside of Ima Tate further back in the field behind those within a length and a half blue sun followed then by artistic rose and the last pair of born again Zam outside of Salamine in that order they work towards the far side of the course and Eastern Harvest having his moment of glory leads the way in the cup he's a length and a quarter in front second wing foot third placing rebuilder about two lengths off getting a bit closer Dolve eat another two to fair bay outside of Ima Tate they've steadied further back artistic rose behind blue sun second last is Selamine and last of all is born again Zam by the 1200 in the cup at the bridge and Eastern Harvest only a half three quarters in front of wing foot who's held together with plenty of leather third on the inside rebuilder a length away Dolve eat looks to be traveling nice Fair Bay's making ground, so is Blue Sun with I'm a Tate. Then born again, Zam Artistic Rose hasn't spent an early centre. Last of all is Selamine. About to leave that far side of the track and head down to the side, down towards the 800 now. And Wingfoot's rider Richard Jolly said, let's go. He kicked away a half, three quarters in front of Eastern Harvest. Dolvit is in hot pursuit with a much lighter weight. Rue Builder's hard ridden downhill. Blue Sun is running on doggedly. Further back, Fair Bay. Then came I'm a Tate, two lengths. Artistic Rose is not travelling for the moment. And then came Selamine and born again Zam Wingfoot leads for home a length and a half in front of the lightly weighted Dolvit Blue Sun to the outside the stayer is sticking on Graham Gimley and they were followed by Fair Bay starting to work home Wingfoot the leader Dolvit comes at it with Blue Sun wider out is Fair Bay they come to the 200 and Dolvit goes after Wingfoot Blue Sun is starting to whack away but Dolvit has taken a slender lead now Dolvit in front of Wingfoot the top weight can do no more and Dolvit from the southeast has started to draw clear and she's going to take the cup 
Dolvit goes home to give Ricky Broom one of his biggest wins in racing. Second's a great go. Blue Sun is there with Rubilda and Fair Bay. I'm a Tate ran on. Wingfoot was just battling away on the inside under his big weight. They're two artistic rows late on the scene. Rebuilder, Eastern Harvest, Born Again, Zam and Selamine wasn't with him at the finish. He was tailed off. Dolvit has been too good. Number three, Dolvit. She finished within a couple of lengths of Wingfoot in the Labor Day Cup recently. And uh, at the weight, she was always travelling. She was probably travelling as well as anything in the race. And uh, you'll find that she's gone home with a couple of lengths to spare over Blue Sun and Fair Bay and uh, others. There's a line of about four or five. But the winner, Dolvit, is a six-year-old brown mare by Twig Moss from the Sir Silver Lad Mare Vit Miel. Jason Holder for Ricky Bruin and is raced by Ricky and Mrs. Ros Bruin. Congratulations to them. All right, hangs on to win the, uh, the big one today at Murray Bridge. At Canberra, 470 for two French Mystic. This is the feature, the uh, Kipax Tavern Racing Room Cup. 360 for Scampi Maravu, Alatomo 830. Nine very tricky at nine and Manaville 280. This is uh, a quality field here at Canberra. And Manaville's going to run the favourite at three dollars. Looks a long way down in class here, but he's still got to get round them. Six the dips, which rip along. Here's David Steele. Thanks a lot, Hilton. They uh, are moving in, as you mentioned, and uh, of a great deal of interest to us here in this race is the three thousand dollar bonus that will go to Glenn Frosch should uh, either of his pair win the race. They're all set though for race six. A nice line. There's the light off and racing. As expected, French Mystics come out quickly. Is going to get across from uh, Nick of Time early on. Alatomo will uh, get through to midfield. Now, uh, back in the field, we've got very tricky third last at the moment. Scampi Maravu wide, but going forward, tailing out early, is Tambara Glen. But French Mystic is the front runner on the side. Manaville's got away quickly from the second line. He's charging up. Scampi Maravu, though, going with him to keep him wide to the first corner. Nick of Time will settle in behind them. Then Alatomo over King Savantes. They really burn up front. Very tricky second last and Tambara Glen can uh, see them all. Manaville working overtime as they reach the judges. Taken over. Lead time 37-6. That's real quick. French Mystic will take the trail now as they go to the back. Caught without cover. Scampi Maravu early on but he took some of the sting out of Manaville. King Savante is going to land the 1-1 over Nick of Time who's three back the inside now. Then very tricky. He'll appreciate the early speed. Three back the outside of Alatomo and three off the veteran Tambara Glen. Will they try and get a bit of a steadier up front now where Manaville after working hard out of the gate shows the way. Leads four metres to Scampi Maravu perched up the outside there of uh, French Mystic. King Savante gets a nice run, 1-1 one, one as they get to the kilometre. Then Nick of Time inside a very tricky. The old Gelding's had a good run, very tricky. Yet the Mayor Alatomo behind them, struggling to stay in touch is Tambara Glen. 37-6 the lead time and 30.8 the first quarter. Speed's been quite genuine here in Manaville. Brings them into the straight at the 8.50. The bell about to sound. Leads a couple of metres to Scampi Maravu, perched outside the leader. Then French Mystic in behind the speed. King Savante 1-1 one, one. over Nick of Time is hemmed away inside a very tricky. The Mayor Alatomo will appreciate the speed. She's second last and three off to Tambara Glen. 30.2 second quarter of the last mile. Speed has been on from the start and Manaville shows the way. Two metres to Scampi Maravu's had a tough run then French Mystic. King Savante feeling the pinch. Nick of time back on the inside. Very tricky hasn't gone nor Alatomo. But about to leave the back straight and still Manaville shows the way. Third quarter is going to be interesting. Up the back they've gone. The uh, quarter not operating at this point but Manaville the leader still going all right. Two and a half metres to Scampi Maravu who's battling on. He's very tricky. The stable made out wide and rounding them up quickly behind them French Mystic and the Mayor Alatomo coming into it. Manaville looks beaten on the corner. We're uh, getting to the lead Scampi Maravu but very tricky the stable mate has hit the lead out wide running on well Alatomo but very tricky. Staring down the face of a $3,000 bonus is clear of Scampi Maravu and Alatomo and it's frost day today. Very tricky takes out the cup. Second the stable mate Scampi Maravu and Alatomo the Mayor third. Manaville had to work too hard fourth over Nick of Time French Mystic, King Savante, and a long gap to the veteran, Tambara Glen. Very tricky indeed. 9.30 and 9.10. And that's a $3,000 trainer's bonus there to Glen Frost. Congratulations. And Nelly Reddy at Caulfield for race seven. Here's John. 
Right, thank you again, Hilton. And this is the Hickman's Racing Legends Country Cup. All the rage video fan at $2.90 should be very hard to beat in this. We saw a great run by Mahogany to win the Churnside Stakes, the previous race in the cut, and take his stake earnings now to $3,643,878. Marvellous effort by Mahogany, first up since May in scoring in the Churnside. Don't forget, you'll see the uh, barrier draw for the Caulfield Cup on Sky Channel at around about 20 minutes past five later today. Now, here's Sergris coming in, proud poet, and also Reaper Barn and the Prior to come up. Sky is getting a bit darker overhead here. The 1,000 guineas, the